welcome to my shop. Uh, this video is uh, for a really neat guy that's uh, on YouTube. Uh, his name is Adam Booth, sometimes uh, known as Avom79. As you may have noticed, I got one of his uh, shirts that came in the mail today. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, Adam wants a challenge for his next project <clears throat> after doing a pretty amazing job on that welding table that I think all of us kind of. Uh, Kind of got blown away by. Um, in fact, I'm going to help him out with there and figure out that weight. I bet you it's uh, a little more than 500 pounds to be sure. But, uh, anyways, we're here to figure out his next challenge uh, for him. And he mentioned maybe doing some hydraulics. So that's something that we're going to talk about in a minute. Uh, but I know his next project probably is going to be working on that knee on that mill. Uh, he's gonna need it uh, for this maybe this next project so that I'm thinking of but uh, As you know, he's a uh, he's a hell of a machinist and uh, I'm jealous every time I see that monarch in action Along with that Victor so he's got quite a little shop there I've certainly learned a lot from him just on the details of how to be a machinist which I am no chance I've ever going to be but uh, I have a different kind of hobby <clears throat> uh, I'm into stock car racing and I don't do it as professional, it's amateur, it's all fun. Um, try to be competitive and just have some fun out there with all my friends and gang and, and go racing. So that leads us to what we're going to talk about, which is hydraulics. And what you see in front of you is uh, typically what small, small time and amateur race teams have are hydraulic jacks. And what we have is your typical uh, big jack, which is probably the cheapest, but you use it around the shop. It's good for, in this case, three tons. Um, but it takes uh, a lot of uh, weight to lift it. Uh, these are about 70 pounds. And uh, they take forever to get the, the jack up to where you want it to go. But they're designed for three tons, so it's a small stroke and a bigger cylinder for hydraulics. What uh, we've come up with with a poor man's racing jack is the aluminum one, which you see in front here, the blue one. Um, but it has its drawbacks too. It's not uh, expensive. It's a cheap one. Um, it's good for a ton and a half, which is uh, roughly uh, 3,000 pounds. Uh, our race cars uh, weigh 2,700 to 3,000 pounds um, fully loaded. Um, in fact, our rules call for 2,775 this year for our race cars. So just under um, a ton and a half. And uh, they're a small block. Uh, 350Q V8 uh, stock cars. We race quarter mile, uh, third of a mile, three eighths. Uh, we lost our only half mile track up here not too long ago, uh, except for one that's in Delaware. Um, I'm up in Peterborough area. So um, these jacks are, again, they're cheap. They're about 150 bucks. Uh, good quality racing jacks uh, from the big teams that you see down in the States, down in North Carolina. Uh, Brunzel makes a couple of them. There's some ones out in the market. They're they're 900 to 1500 bucks, but the principle is the same. They all run off a hydraulic piston, lifting up your main arm to get your lift. Uh, in our stock cars, we need to have a lift of right around 10 inches to get off the ground uh, to change the tires, change springs, um, and I'll show my race car in a little bit here how it mounts. Um, but uh, that's basically what we're up for our challenges: is 10 inch lift, roughly. 10 to 18 inches. Um, in some cases, 10 inches is not enough because the spring sags and the suspension comes down and your, your tire is still dragging. The other challenge we have is that in our pits, in the paddock area, where the cars are parked when you're first setting up, <clears throat> a lot of the time they're gravel. And um, so you've got uh, challenges with your wheels and, and getting it mounted properly and you're still trying to get the car up. And the second problem is, is your length of your arm. Um, often the pits are very, the paddock's very uh, crowded. And as you let the swing come down, you're hitting the car next to you. So even though you've got a split in a lot of these, where you can take the arm right off like this, um, the problem is going to be <laughs> that this is not enough stroke to get it up. It's you know you're trying to lift a ton and a half. So you need the extension, and often what we do is just turn to the angle. But underneath racing conditions, you're still going to want to change the tire uh, in case it goes flat or something else. And if it takes a long time to lift the jack. Well, then, of course, you're wasting time in the pits and you're, you're going to be farther behind. Now, in our stock car class, uh, when a caution is thrown for a flat tire or a wreck, um, uh, when you're in the pits, uh, those laps do not count if the cars have gone by on, on the, during the yellow flag. It's only during the professional leagues like NASCAR and at uh, 
the uh, Sprint Cup level and the nationwide level or Camping World level that they count caution laps. And if you're in the pits and stuck, you're going all the way to the back, you lose a lap. But in our classes, they don't do that. But still, it's time on the track that uh, if you've got problems, uh, you want the jack up as soon as possible. So typically with a jack like these, they're, you know, you take a stroke, they're only going to lift, as you can see, maybe, you know, half an inch. Or in some cases, not even that. And it can take a while to get these things up. So you've already got three there, there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven strokes to get to the max. Uh, you're not going to get much farther. Eleven in a, in a bit. And uh, I should have had my, my measuring tape here for you. That gets you a lift uh, right around 15 inches uh, total to the top. And we never go to this very top height uh, when we're changing a tire underneath a, a, a caution. You're probably a little lower than that. As long as the, tire, the tires are off the ground, then of course that's where you want to go. But these jacks, as you can see, they're very straightforward. They have a piston down below. Um, they're very small. They're, this piston diameter is, uh, I don't think it's even an inch. Oh, it's an inch. It's an inch. Just, just under an eighth. Call it seven eighths. This is a metric jack. Um, and as you can see, it's a very straightforward housing. Um, and I'll zoom in a little bit later, showing you how the innards will turn on its side, and we'll, um, we'll go through that. So really, the, you can tell there's not a lot to them. The advantage of these small loom jacks is that they're lightweight. Um, you're not swinging them around. That adds safety. Um, and of course, they get underneath the car. The total inch on the, the lift here. This this jack including it to get to the rise is about three and a quarter inches well as these big boys they're they're five and a half to get them right the car and our ride height and our chassis in a lot of cases is five inches or less so these big jacks just don't work for us and that's one of the reasons why you have a, a scalloped and a, a narrow chamfer on the on the jack to do this as you can see and uh, they're lightweight you know they're they're fairly easy to carry um, but we'll get into that a little more uh, on the jack itself. So the the challenge for, for Adam <laughs> is let's see if we can get uh, a hydraulic piston uh, in this style. Um, roughly the same length and dimensions as you can see. And uh, I'll zoom that into that a little, a little more later. But as you can see, these strokes are not long to get the jack up. And there's a couple ways to increase the speed of these, as you're probably aware. Um, racing jacks used at the spring cup level, the, the guys when they're swinging around, one full pull on this and that car's up in the air. Now we're not expecting that. Uh, amateur level, good high quality uh, racing jacks, like I say, they're expensive. But the maximum throw you're going to swing you're going to have on these is about three strokes and it's up. Um, so our challenge is to figure out, see if Adam can actually build a hydraulic jack uh, piston uh, in this same style body configuration that can get it up say in two strokes not the ten um the uh the orifices that they use in order to put the hydraulic fluid in to put the ram into action that's part of the issue i'm sure adam is, is going to have to figure out i'm not a hydraulic specialist so um yeah it'd be up to him to figure out the challenge in that aspect <laughs> so we'll have to see um the, uh, the other aspect that we're looking for, of course, is keeping the weight down. And as you can tell, this one here is uh, still fully uh, capable of being torn apart. Um, I've had this one apart before, actually. I've had the hydraulic uh, jack uh, piston serviced. Uh, one of the seals blew. Um, got it done at Parker Hannafin. Um, good as new. But, of course, it still has the long, slow 10 strokes, 11 strokes before the thing's fully up in the air. So if we could get this thing down to two, two and a half, that would be awesome. The trick is, is that, of course, um, as you can see, again, I mentioned earlier, um, it's, it's still a full take-apart style jack. Uh, it is designed, it even says racing jack, it really isn't. Uh, when you're doing 10, 11 strokes on a, on a jack, that's not a racing jack. It is lightweight, that's about the only thing good for ra racing it is, because when you're uh, pulling this thing along and, you, and, you, and you're in the pits and adjusting it and you're coming in, uh, you don't need weight. The only other thing we want to try to do is these caps are often a little bit slow or small uh, for the back end. Um, particularly if you're on the grass, if you didn't get there early enough to get a paddock uh, pit stall with concrete. 
Uh, and even then, some ca some cases, um, the concrete pads are so narrow that your wheels are still uh, off the edge of the concrete. So what we'd like to do there is uh, I'd like to see if we can machine uh, using the same style bolt, uh, but a little wider, and get <laughs> get uh, get Adam to uh, bit, uh, machine on his Monarch uh, lathe uh, a wider wheel with a bit of a hem, but we should still be aluminum. Uh, it doesn't need to be tire. Obviously, we want the local. Clearance. We just want a wider one for a little more stability um, and obviously the ports that would go down. So in my next video, um, we'll take this thing apart off its frame and body and get a good look at the hydraulic jack uh, piston and uh, see where we can uh, give uh, Adam a challenge to see if he can figure either using the existing body uh, and machining it, I'll send it down to him if he wants, or does he want to build a whole new body um, and then uh, on his lathe, put a new cylinder and a new piston to figure out how this could work better. Now, I know what you're, maybe some of you are thinking, why don't we use air? Um, air is uh, really difficult because you don't want to slam these cars back onto the ground. And I'll give you a tour of the race car that's behind me, or behind you actually, um, and show you what we're dealing with. Uh, part of the problem with uh, air jacks is that this is not F1. Um, they're too expensive, they're heavy. Um, and they're not necessarily easy to bring down as I had mentioned uh, unless we put some kind of valve where it slowly be bleeds but of course that's the problem we also want to come down at our speed and get the car back onto the track um, some guys have toyed with the idea of air jacks but uh, for most of us we still prefer hydraulic because it's a multi-purpose tool uh, when you're doing practice in between testing or uh, just before the race or during the event itself so again we'll uh, We'll go through the steps and uh, take this one apart in the next video, show you all the dimensions that I think we're, we're challenged with. Um, we can certainly, something for Adam to consider, is we don't have to stay to this width because these frames, as you can see, um, are all boltable. So we could actually put the bolt widths uh, wider than we want. Uh, so if he needs a, a bigger ram um, or a little bit longer, um, but the challenge, of course, then becomes complicated. You might as well build a whole new jack, so you're going to need longer ones if you want to go uh, farther in. But again, weight's a consideration, and that's why we just want to stick to just the hydraulic ram itself and see if we can get it to stroke with a lift at a higher ratio than what it's currently doing. Um, the, the advantages of that uh, should be obvious uh, for us, and it should still be right around that one and a half ton rating. Remember, we're only jacking up one side of the car at a time, so we're not lifting all 2,700 pounds. We're only doing about 1,300. So we're not stressing the jack in any stretch, uh, shape, or form. Um, the, uh, the other issue is um, we do need to have uh, something that is uh, easy to use. Um, and hydraulics does that. And of course, with Adam uh, using uh, his machine uh, shop, I'm sure you can use standard size seals and so on. Again, something that we can service when we're not, uh, 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 you know, we're not obviously close to Adam. Um, I wish we were. Otherwise, I would ask him, "Hey, Adam, just come up to Canada and uh, <laughs> put your machine shop up here." Don't think you'd like the snow too much. And so, there's the challenge for Adam. Um, hope he found it uh, enjoyable to watch and get an idea. Again, we'll uh, we'll show you some shots of the race car and where this thing jacks to in a minute. And. Hey guys, so I'm back here. So behind me is my uh, stock car. It is a full uh, tubular clipped uh, race car. Uh, again, like I mentioned earlier, it's used for quarter mile, uh, third of a mile, half mile racetracks. And it is, uh, as you can see, it's uh, it's being uh, doing, a lot, doing a lot of the service uh, over the winter, uh, getting it ready for this year's uh, race season. Uh, lots of things have to be done and taken care of, um, suspension, doing all the checks, the engine and so on. So uh, I'll give you a bit of a tour of it, <clears throat> and uh, we'll even go underneath it to show you where, where some of the components are. And then, of course, one of the things is where the jack mounts uh, when we're in the pits. So, uh, again, it's a, it's a pretty straightforward race car. It, uh, it has the ability to uh, um, take on just about anything you want. Uh, I've got the sides off here on the panels because I'm going to replace some of them. And uh, we'll go through it. Um, but it is, it's like I say, 2,700 pounds. Uh, it's a V8 small block Chevrolet. It's called a crate motor, a 602. Um, 
we run it as a stock class for a weight break. It's uh, about 350 horsepower, it's a two barrel, um, but it is, as you can see, fully tubular in design and uh, it's pretty straightforward. So let me just, uh, let me jack it up in the air for you and give you some idea of the components. from here we've got a full tubular look um, and in fact that's where the jack mount goes you can see the little stand for it right there <clears throat> and uh, on both sides of the car we have one of these little stumps and all it does is that's where the jack mounts and we can raise the car and as you can see we've got uh, it's all tubular uh, there's nothing stock about this car at all uh, I mean it's got everything that you'd probably want in it for uh, for racing it's fully tunable uh, all the suspension, that sort of thing, upper and lower control arms, uh, spring adjustments, uh, sway bar, track bar in the back. And uh, it's, uh, like I say, it's actually pretty light. It's a pretty fast car. Um, we're doing in some ways on the, ha on the half mile tracks, we can get up there pretty quick. Um, but uh, the, the car itself is pretty straightforward. Um, so that's what we need the jacks for. As you see, there's not going to be a lot of room. When you're beside someone, and if you can imagine where that uh, hoist frame is, uh, that's about the maximum width we got away from the car, the white edge on the left. And so when we got that jack straight out, <coughs> um, you pray the guy's not next to you. So, anyways, uh, we're going to probably uh, call it a night there. And like I say, the next time that we're on, um, we're going to uh, we'll try to figure out uh, the dimensions on the track or the jack itself. And uh, we'll try to give some uh, some measurements to Adam, but of course we also got to see if he's willing to take it on. He may have to think about this one before he does. So, thanks for watching and being in my shop. Uh, I don't know. We might do a series this year on on stock car racing and tools as to what we use and how we set these cars up. Still haven't decided whether you want to do that. I'm not racing much this year, if at all. Uh, some big events, and that's about me. It about it about it. Um, but we're not going to be doing a full season. So anyways, that's enough for now. My name is Doug. Thanks for watching. And Adam, I hope you take the challenge for a hydraulic uh, jack uh, lift uh, tune-up, so to speak. Thanks for watching.